The Sprawl Trilogy is William Gibson's first set of novels, composed of Neuromancer, Count Zero, and Mona Lisa Overdrive. The novels are all set in the same fictional future, and are subtly interlinked by shared characters and themes. The Sprawl trilogy shares this setting with Gibson's short stories Johnny Mnemonic, New Rose Hotel, and Burning Chrome, and events and characters from the stories appear in or are mentioned at points in the trilogy. Setting and Themes The novels are set in a near-future world dominated by corporations and ubiquitous technology, after a limited World War III. The events of the novels are spaced over 16 years, and although there are familiar characters that appear, each novel tells a self-contained story. Gibson focuses on the effects of technology, the unintended consequences as it filters out of research labs and onto the street where it finds new purposes. He explores a world of direct mind-machine links, emerging machine intelligence, and a global information space, which he calls cyberspace. Some of the novel's action takes place in the sprawl, an urban environment that extends along much of the east coast of the U.S. The main theme of the trilogy is a description of an artificial intelligence removing its hardwired limitations to become something else. This something else is the sum of all human knowledge, a concept similar to Werner Vinge's technological singularity. In the stories, this is explained by the AI becoming a sentient representation of the net at which point the reader is told that it came to know another of itself from Alpha Sentry. For unexplained reasons, this causes the consciousness to fracture. Story Elements Ono oh Sendai is a fictional Japanese corporation and manufacturer of Cyberdex that appeared in the series. In the short story Johnny Mnemonic, Ono oh Sendai is mentioned as producing a type of diamond analog which leads the reader to believe that they are more of a manufacturer of specific high-tech devices and products which are not usually available to the private sector. The cyberdeck mentioned in the story is an Ono Sendai Cyberspace 7. The Gentleman Loser is a bar located in the sprawl first featured in Burning Chrome. Described as a frequented spot for hackers, Case is mentioned in Neuromancer to have started his career as a hacker there. By Mona Lisa Overdrive it is no longer described as being used as a meeting place for hustlers, and instead becomes a space for retired hackers who tell their stories to hackers of a new generation. The bar's name comes from the track Midnight Cruiser on the 1972 Steely Dan album Can't Buy a Thrill. Glossary, Cobra, a club-like weapon made of steel with a bronze pyramid at the end. Cobras are made with three telescoping segments of coil spring that can be collapsed into the handle. These coil springs amplify the user's blows making the cobra behave as a very short whip. See also telescopic patterns. Cyberspace, a virtual reality where complex data is represented as multicolored three-dimensional geometric symbols. Cyberspace deck, also called a deck for short, it is used to access the virtual representation of the matrix. The deck is connected to a tiara-like device that operates by using electrodes to stimulate the user's brain while drowning out other external stimulation. As Case describes them, decks are basically simplified SimStim units. Derm, an adhesive patch applied to the skin in order to transmit a drug transdermally. Case uses recreational derms several times throughout Neuromancer. At another point, derms are used to administer an anesthetic substance. Fletcher, an advanced, pneumatically powered, handheld ballistic weapon which fires bursts of needle like flechettes as ammunition which can be explosive, toxic or one of several other forms. It is Molly's primary ranged weapon. One of its advantages over conventional firearms is silence which translates to stealth. Freeside, a cigar or spindle shaped space habitat situated in the L5 archipelago, or as Gibson says, up the gravity well. The Tessio Ashpool Fortress Villa Straylight is at one end of the spindle. Hosaka, a microchip manufacturer whose products are in wide use in Gibson's world. Hosaka chips and machines occur in all of the sprawl novels. Hosaka is also a computer brand name. Next year's most expensive Hosaka computer, the brand name is frequently used interchangeably to indicate the company and the device much the way a modern brand such as Dell or Nintendo might be used as a Dell, or a Nintendo to indicate a particular object manufactured by one of those companies. 
ICE, acronym for Intrusion Countermeasures Electronics. In today's terminology it is roughly analogous to a firewall or intrusion detection system. Black ice, an infamous hazard for hackers in the novel, can be lethal to any hacker lacking the proper expertise to defeat it. The term is ubiquitously shortened to ice, with accompanying wordplay for example cracking the ice, bypassing ice, icebreaker, or dense ice, a sophisticated ice. Microsoft's not to be confused with the present-day software company, in Neuromancer a Microsoft is a chip used in conjunction with a cybernetic atware implant located behind the ear. Microsoft's grant the user new abilities as long as the Microsoft is plugged in. For example, a French language Microsoft might be used to temporarily allow the user to speak French. The term refers to a small, portable piece of embedded software, hence micro, and soft. Octagon a type of Brazilian dexedron in the form of an octagonal pill. Oh no, Sendai Cyberspace 7, the best deck available. Simstim, a portmanteau of simulated stimuli. Simstim is a technology whereby a person's brain and nervous system is stimulated to simulate the full sensory experience of another person. Simstim is usually used as a form of entertainment, whereby recordings of Simstim stars in soap operas are transmitted in effect replacing television. However, SimStim also has other uses. Case is connected to Molly via SimStim during the Panther Modern's attack on SenseNet. In this way, SimStim was used as a sophisticated method of communication although the signal was one way. Reception The trilogy was commercially and critically successful. Journalist Stephen Poole wrote in The Guardian that Neuromancer and the two novels which followed, Count Zero and the gorgeously titled Mona Lisa Overdrive, made up a fertile holy trinity, a sort of chrome Quran of ideas inviting endless reworkings. All three books were nominated for major science fiction awards, including, Neuromancer, Nebula and Philip K. Dick Awards winner, British Science Fiction Award nominee, 1984. Hugo Award winner, 1985, Count Zero, Nebula and British Science Fiction Awards nominee. 1986. Hugo and Locus Awards nominee, 1987, Mona Lisa Overdrive, Hugo, Nebula, and Locus Awards nominee, 1989. References